Hello and welcome back to Total War Warhammer. I am Gary and Raven. These are my first impressions of the DLC, Call of the Beastmen. Since that first impressions I did of Total Warhammer, I have played over 100 hours of this game. I love it. Which is why I was really pleased when the developers sent me a key for their new DLC, Call of the Beastmen, which adds a whole new race, the Beastmen, as well as a separate mini campaign. So I thought I'd do the campaign as the Beastmen, and see how it stacks up. So this campaign is more focused and more narrative, a desperate clash between two legends of the Drakwald and it's a fight between the Beastmen and the Empire. So an eye for an eye. The race functions by Horde Army similar to the Chaos ones except they don't suffer from infighting which is the bit about the Chaos Armies that always annoyed me. There are normally two leaders to choose from but you only get one for this campaign. Yeah so you can only take Kazrak the One-Eye for this, which is fine. I usually go for the faction leader for my first play anyway. And as you can see, it's a slightly different map. It's like all about Middenland rather than this sort of whole thing at large. So if we go for a normal difficulty. So the Beastmen's deal is that they are sort of anti-civilization. They hate what man has done to the world, that they've sort of built cities and roads and chopped down forests, and they're not like... Uh, environmentalists, uh, quite the opposite. They just, they just really hate the idea of civilization. But I actually read uh, White Dwarf from like 2009, 2010 about the release of the last Beastmen army book, so that I could sort of get a feel for how they play and how they're supposed to operate in this game. So that basically said that there are orcs, but you know they're not my problem, and I need to sort of build up to confederate with the other people. So let's see. Destroy Karaburg. There are yet those who have not yet. Okay, that's a bit of a mistake. Learned Kazarak's name. The blood ground calls and he answers. Ah, uh, so yeah, these use uh, the favor like chaos do. I've got Kazrak, uh, two Gors, one Ungor. Oh no, three Ungor, and a couple of Ungor raiders, Centigors, and Minotaurs. Tech tree. Oh, that's not too complicated. Some are just bloody complicated, like the the dwarf tech tree is freaking huge, but this seems quite simple. I think the first one I'm going to go for is income from raiding increase. Oh, it slows down research. Oh, that's clever. All right, maybe not. Oh, I see. Everything slows down research. Everything you choose apart from, like, this stuff slows down research. All right, I'll give research the boost then, so there's one turn for that, extra 20% so I can get these four. That seems to make sense. One of the things with the Beastmen is that the Beastmen ambush is their default stance. So when they're ambushing, it means that other armies can't see them until they're sort of within a certain range. So they're good at ambushing, these ones. So if my first task is to destroy Karaburg, I think I'd better start attacking Karaburg. So I think Caden is the uh, weakest choice, because I don't want to go too close to Karaburg and draw out the big guns. So if I recruit and move. So I shift you down here. Who's that? Oh, that's an army in Caribou, but I can probably take him. So recruit. Oh no, I've got to... Uh... Ooh. Oh, I see. That's how... Okay. Bestial rage meter. And as it goes down, presumably you... Yeah, you suffer infighting. So keep bestial rage high by winning battles or adopting the raiding stance. Okay, so it's gone down one per turn due to animosity. Alright, I think I got that. Technology researched. Oh, that was nice and easy. Which means now I can get the income from raiding. And you see it's reduced it so that's down to six turns instead of seven. Ooh. Neutral tribe encountered. Other war herds roam these lands. Like us, they long for battle and destruction. It's possible they can be swayed to aid us with the right incentive. Raise and sack three settlements belonging to the Empire provinces. And then they will respect me. Alright, so that'll be uh, this one, this one, and another one. So the reason I'm going for this one is that way I can catch them in there, stop them from recruiting, and then go and get this one when I've taken out their army. So, let's see how they stack up. Fucking hell, we're going to get destroyed. Um, in circle then. <laughs> A dark choice. I can either have a hero recruited or a hero recruited. I'm going to go with the Brace Shaman, which are the sort of magic casters. So embed that. 
See, this is how I tend to do these uh, these procedures if I don't think I have a clear victory. I tend to encircle them and get them so that they start suffering, because with each turn of uh, attrition that they suffer from being encircled, they lose half of their men. So just one turn of encircling and it halves their force. That is incredibly powerful at... Uh, at taking down a larger force. So two more turns, or three more turns, and then I'll be able to attack. Okay, so now we have increased raiding. Ooh. More Salib is ascendant, usurping the sun's revered place in the firmament. The world is awash with its sick and terrible hue. Such an event is almost unheard of. It is a call to the beastmen. Ah, I see the name dropped it. A sign that the herd is, has an opportunity to dominate. Lead them, beast lord. Seize glory. Also, I get to choose between four things. So I'm going to go for the horde growth. Because I'm just sort of sitting here, I haven't suffered any losses, so that's not an issue. And this way I can uh, get some some more horde growth, you see here, which is... Ah, uh, see, that's gone up to 11, that was on 5. Horde growth is what horde armies, that's this one in Chaos, use to grow. So I can sort of build these things, and as you can see, they cost growth and money. And I have, at the moment, not enough money, but I have 5 surplus population. So here they're now suffering from attrition, from malnutrition, because they've run out of food. And next turn, they will have dropped to half strength on everything. There you go, they're now half strength, and as you can see, next turn they will get half strength again. But I should now, yep, yeah, tip the balance of power way in my favour, because all of them are now much, much weaker. So the thing about the Beastmen is that a lot of them have this Vanguard deployment, which means they can be deployed anywhere outside of this white line and not just in my deployment zone. That's because in the uh, Warhammer board game, they can sort of ambush from any angle. So I'm thinking of surrounding them completely and then luring them out. What is that? No idea. It's just some sort of shitty little village. And then sort of luring them out and then encircling them. So my Shaman has access to Wyson's Wild Form, increasing weapon damage and armor on an ally. Not the most useful, I don't tend to use augments much in this game, but let's give this a go. So all they're doing is they're taking a defensive position. Unfortunately, they're defending themselves at the bottom or on the side of this hill. So I can approach via in front of the hill almost unattacked. See, they're taking a very defensive position here. They're moving their troops to cover their missile troops just in case I charge, but I have a better idea. I'm just going to soften them up from a distance like this and then close in slowly until they pick a direction. Which they're doing, they're picking the main assault, which works for me because it's sort of the least distance I have to travel, I guess. So now, as we're about to make contact with the enemy, I will augment the Minotaurs to give them an extra boost in combat because they're monstrous infantry and absolutely wreck. So I've Got combat all across the battle line now. See if you can come in to catch these great swords. And you, yeah, you just stay out of combat. I don't know how good you are in combat. The only thing holding the army together at the moment is Ludwig, and he is wavering. Come on. Lose. I mean, he's up against my general and some bloody minor. Yeah, he failed. Awesome. And then a little trick Charlie taught me was to then turn off thingy to make them attack, uh, yeah, toggle melee mode for your archers. So I'll just leave this to run until they uh, get all the kills they're going to get. And there we have a successful battle. Calling the beast, the war herd. I just got an achievement. Calling the beast herd. I lost 76 out of over a thousand. That is pretty good. And one of my things got 66 kills. Overall, quite happy with that. Oh, it is dripping with blood. Is that the gore? I got the gore DLC as well. Is that because I've got the gore DLC, or is that just so just what it is for the Beastman? Or what it is now? I haven't played recently. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to raise and defile, because I'm going to sort of move through, and I don't really need the money. So that gives me a load of extra population. So, as I always go for my first skill point, Increase movement range. Look at that, that's given an additional 23 for winning the fight and destroying the settlement. That is pretty good. Alright, now I think I'll take a break and upgrade the 
sort of war herd capital thing from an ancient blood ground to a hag tree copse which increases uh, sort of recruitment and horde growth and everything and is good to subdue it as soon as possible. However, I can also get a den to get some warhounds, which are very good for flanking. Oh, wow, I had very few turns to do that. Whoops. Okay. The Savage Blow. Yeah, this extra blood splattering has to be because of the Gore DLC. I, got that all, uh, I also got that from uh, the developers, but I, I've not yet played with it. The advantage of Horde Armies is that all of these sort of buildings are done instantly. They just take one turn to build. So that way you're not like, spending turns and turns waiting for it. So I will upgrade it again as I have the, the, the surplus. And it's always good to have them because the uh, Horde growth increase means that they're sort of always... It's always easier to get more in the future and I will get a couple of them. So now that that's all good, I move back into Ambush. And let's go screw up the next settlement. This one I'll just attack straight off. So now I've got these warhounds, the trick would be to sort of lure them into maybe drawing off a, a unit? Maybe not. At the very least, I will sort of use them to distract the archers while the rest of my armor gets into position. Here you see they are shooting, or they were shooting at my gore herd behind, so my archers have managed to whittle down their health quite a bit as well as a lot of their morale, at which point they've now noticed this sort of large force amassing in front of them, and they don't quite know what to do about it. And now they're fleeing! That didn't take a lot. They sent some spearmen after my warhounds. We've now retreated because they're much faster. Ooh. Can you get some augmenting on these minotaurs, please? Thank you. I am completely screwing with these spearmen. They don't know what to do. They're sort of charging the nearest one. Now I've completely surrounded them, taken out the rest of the army, and pincer move. And there we go, another decisive victory for the beastmen. I lost even fewer that time. That is actually a very nice thing. I will uh, loot and raise that one. So I can get some nice, a nice boost in cash. Gotta say, this is turning out more of a uh, an informative look at this, using my expertise of pl having this played this game for so many bloody hours. But I I'm okay with that on this one because it, it is a bit hard to do a sort of proper first impressions after you've played as many hours of this game as I have. So it's it's sort of nice to to go into one of these with sort of the the knowledge of this game. Also, interesting to note, you can see that this is uh, it's gone red, this water. That shows that there is high chaos corruption in this area. How high is it, actually? 55% because of all my defiling and stuff. So that I absolutely love how it changes the landscape depending on the corruption. Okay, there, that is a big army coming in, bigger than mine. So I'm going to break the siege and bugger off so I don't die. Okay, I've now maxed out my army as best I can, but I'm very, very low on income, so I need to do some raiding. So let's see if I can head back here and get some get some raiding going on. These seem to be coming up quite regularly. This is the third one I've had, so this one I'm going to go with weapon strength and melee attack increase. Because I'm thinking now is a good time to attack. So for this siege I've gone for a two-prong assault because I, I really like going for the two-prong assault because it means that they have much less chance of being able to cover all the walls fairly. So this seems like a fairly easy city to besiege. So very simply I'm going to get battering rams on there and send ladders up every wall I can. And the way this should work is it will overload them with my numbers because Beastmen hordes are goddamn huge. So, if I get all of these to attack at once, I mean, the centigors aren't going to be able to climb the walls because they're half horse, but they can wait neatly outside the walls for the gate to fall. Same with my uh, Chaos Hounds and my Minotaurs as well, although they can help batter it down. As you can see, they've only got three units here and they just. Oh no, four. 
but they just don't know how to defend against this many people boarding their walls at once. So they've all but stopped shooting and they're now just like panicking, realizing that they're going to have melee combat on their walls at any moment. And the Minotaurs are in. Oh, they sneakily had a unit waiting inside, but that's okay. It's like that scene in Return of the King where it's like, Whatever comes through those doors, we are you are men of Gondor and you can hold them back. Oh shit, three trolls. So this time it's like eight Minotaur. Twelve Minotaur, my mistake. It's even better for me. It's four times as worse as the bloody trolls. Then again, to be perfectly honest, I think I'd rather face a Minotaur than a, a Mordor troll. Could just be me, but... Mordor trolls are bloody tough. I mean, Minotaurs, I imagine, are quite tough. I mean, 12 of them is the equivalent of like 120 Horde army, but still. Yeah, this siege is never going to go well for them. I think I've only ever captured by victory points once, because I just... It, the way I see it is if I'm going to get into a siege, I'm going to get into a siege that I will definitely win. I'm very much a uh, sort of don't enter the fight if you can't win it, or if you might not win it. Only enter the fight voluntarily if you are going to bloody annihilate them. That That's a quote from Sun Tzu. Bloody annihilate. His words. That was very, very easy. I bet I lost less than 100 men despite it being a siege. Oh, I lost 400! Wow! Okay. But I do have 2,200, so... The reason the, the units are so much larger is that there's a setting in the options so you can sort of choose how large the armies are because they're, they're about the same equivalent of strength as like the lower tier ones but I've got it on ultra army size, unit size so that the battles just look so much more impressive and once again I will go for the money because I'm a little bit in need of it the call to the great hunt has been answered the ground lurches and rides as the great bray herd is summoned this merciless horde of beastmen is gathered in Shinefeld ready to feast and fight Ooh, what's this? A Brayherd army. Ooh. Oh, I see. I don't actually control them. Hang on, let's have a read. That's really cool. It's it's like um, I d I've not actually played orcs and goblins yet, but they have something similar to this, don't they, with the war, where it's like a second army that's sort of allied and will follow. Uh, an uh, army must be 17 units for a Bray unit to uh, a Bray herd to form. It will follow its host and may be assigned to a separate target, but it will disperse if the uh, if the if the uh, rage drops too low or if the army shrinks. And the rage is goddamn topped out. That is really cool. I've got to say, I'm really enjoying this. This feels a lot more dynamic than the chaos, which felt a little bit slow because you couldn't have more than one at any in any one location it was very much an uphill fight with everything but this this is like really different it's dynamic and it's because the the point of this is you can just completely mob them this is a horde army in every meaning of it whereas the chaos one is a horde army in that it moves and ah oh, i'm really enjoying this and this mini campaign focuses on them quite well so i'm going to leave it there but I am really enjoying this and I'm probably going to play a lot more Call of the Beastmen in the near future. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know which is your favourite army in Total War Warhammer and which armies you'd love to see added. For the record, Skaven. Just goddamn love Skaven. And High Elves. I quite like High Elves as well. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you later.